Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Joseph from ScreenBite, and today I wanted to talk about lens adapters. Now, the GH5 is a very capable camera, and one of the reasons why it's so capable is because of the Micro Four Thirds sensor. While it is small and it does have its drawbacks, one of the benefits of it being so small is you can practically adapt any lens to it, in theory. And to do that, you're going to need lens adapters. Now, when it comes to adapters, there's two different styles. You have a dummy and a smart adapter. A uh, dummy is exactly what it sounds like. It just connects the camera to the body and allows you to use it. Now that's fantastic for manual lenses, but when you have one that's fully electronic like this one, you can't control aperture. And it makes it very difficult to use this lens in any well-lit scene. Now, with a smart adapter, it allows for electronic communication between the camera and the lens, which means you can use the lens like it was on a native body. And that's where this comes into play. So I got the Kipon Brava Eye, I believe that's how you pronounce it, but it is a smart adapter, which is also a focal reducer, which allows me to get a wider focal range, almost as if I was shooting on an APS-C sensor, and it gives you an extra stop of light. Now, if that sounds very familiar, that's because one of those already exists, and that is by Metabones. But those are $600 to $700 for a comparable model. This one was $428. So, let's put it on the camera, and let's see how it does. So, inside the, I must say, very nice packaging, you will get the adapter and not much else. <laughs> put that off to the side so uh, it is definitely a very very sturdy build uh, all metal uh, lens claps are plastic but who cares um, it has the locking mechanism here as well as a USB port for firmware updates now from what I've read online if you do buy a speed booster or a focal reductor and you can't afford the Metabones, make sure the one that you're getting comes with a USB port. Uh, the reason why is firmware updates. Uh, apparently, uh, these adapters only ever really work well uh, with firmware updates, as well as it will allow any future lenses that you purchase to work very well with any future mounts. So definitely worth getting one with a USB adapter. Uh, when you open it up, you'll have the lens element. And in the back is the Micro Four Thirds with electronic connections. Nice. Now putting these on your camera are pretty straightforward. Uh, you simply just remove, be very careful, grab your camera, take off the front plate, and you just line it up with the red dot and twist. Sometimes it clicks and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if it's just a faulty unit that I received, but um, you have to really make sure that's on there, but it's on there as you can see. And then you take your camera lens, line it up with the red dot in the front there. So this is where I don't think you're gonna hear the click. Oh wow, there was a click that time. There we go. And just like that, your lens is on the camera. Please excuse the mic quality from this part of the video. I'm recording directly off of my LG V30 for this. So uh, right now I have the adapter, the Kipon adapter attached to the front of the camera. And I'm gonna show you that for $200 less than a Metabone Speed Booster, you can essentially get a camera mount that works perfectly with my Sigma lens. So, let's take a look. As of right now, nothing is in focus, and I currently have it set up to record a scene between two of my little characters. And the camera just went to sleep. <laughs> Alright, cool. So, let's go ahead and rack some focus. So, I can go ahead and tap on Doctor Strange's face here, and boom. Just like that, you can see it found focus. Now, the motor is a little bit loud, um, but for the things where I'm gonna be racking focus like that, I'm probably not gonna be recording the sound straight from the camera anyway. 
But uh, now I'm going to go ahead and move it to the Spider-Man here. Let's focus just a little bit and boom, focused. Now back to Doctor Strange. Now right there is one thing that is strange and I'm glad it actually happened. It's funny, Doctor Strange. But uh, sometimes when you're hunting focus, it won't find it for the square that you put it on and that was directly on his face. But if I move it ever so slightly to the left, now all of a sudden he's in focus and that was super fast. And then we go back to Spider-Man. And we go back to Doctor Strange. Watch, it's not gonna find his focus. Crazy, right? But let's say I click on the yellow thing. Boom, found focus. I don't know why it does that, but it works. And that's all that matters for me. It'll work for when I need to use it. Uh, and of course you will have full control of your manual controls by shutting off the manual focus on the lens and I'm good to go. Now the next main reason why I really love this adapter is I have full control over my aperture and exposure now. So I can go ahead and use my little wheel. I remapped these two on the GH5 to make it a little bit harder for me to mess with my shutter speed. But check this out. I can fully stop down my lens. Now, unlike with the Metabone Speed Booster, um, it's not gonna show you what the, the aperture that you're getting. Um, so with this, it is giving me an extra stop of light as well as it is giving me that APS-C sensor focal length. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm zoomed into right now, but this is an 18 to 35. Uh, so that'll essentially turn a 35 millimeter into a 50, which is fantastic because it's way better than a two times crop. So this is technically not 1.7. This is technically giving me an f-stop of, I believe, 1.0. So as you can see, it performs pretty darn well. So if you're on a budget and you can't afford the Metabones adapter, I would definitely recommend giving this one a shot. I haven't had any crashes or issues with it so far, and it's definitely worth the price to me. But um, hey, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. So thank you once again for watching. As always, if you liked it, make sure to show it by hitting that like button down below. It really helps me out. As well as if you have any questions about what we talked about today, you can feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. You can also hit me up on Twitter at ScreenBite with any questions as well. Uh, stick around for the next episode because we are going to be reviewing the Zowie EC2B. And it is a mouse that I am very excited about. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see that. As well as if you like the content as well. But until next time, I will see you guys in the next video.